All right, we have two more signings to talk about. Let's hop into it. Hey, what's going on? I'm Matt O'Leary back with another video and today I'll be talking about two signing the Jets have made. Before we get started, I just wanted to mention that you can follow me on social media at Matt O'Leary and why. And if you haven't already, please make sure to check out the Just Jets podcast. Last but not least, check out the Patreon. Five bucks a month gets you bonus New York Jets content. We're doing player write up Jets analytics, whole lot of fun stuff going on over there. Don't want to miss out. All right, so after releasing yesterday's video, like literally 30 seconds later, Tyler Conklin signed. So just my luck, but said, all right, I'll wait to the morning. And it's a good thing I did because the Jets made another signing. So we could talk about both this morning. Uh, so first, Tyler Conklin, three years, $21 million. It's an AAV of $7 million a year. He's only 26 years old, and this just adds to the tight end room, something that was atrocious for the New York Jets last year. And Ryan Griffin is absolutely a cut candidate after this. It was you know, pretty much rumored that it was all but a lock at that point. 593 yards, three touchdowns. And what this does is it allows the Jets to run 12 personnel. Last year, they tried. If you remember early on in the year, they were really trying, but they had Trayvon Wesco, Ryan Griffin, Daniel Brown, Tyler Croft, and it just wasn't working. So they transitioned and was running a lot of 11 personnel. And it was fine. You know, Mike LaFleur ended up coming into his own and, you know, ended up having a pretty good offense last year. But comparatively, you want to be able to run 12 personnel depending on the matchup. And this allows them to do that. He has pretty good hands. Only one drop last year, which is a major, major improvement for this team. Good yards after the catch guy, too. He's hard to bring down and just like can go up and get the ball. I've seen some clips of him, you know, lining up on the outside and beating corners. It's just a versatile piece. He's not as good of a blocker as CJ Uzma, but he's fine. Like, I, I'm not really worried about him. He'll hold his own. And to me, this allows the Jets to not take a tight end as early as many, including myself, were projecting them to do. I think you still have to take one, but you could probably wait until day three and target a guy like Jake Ferguson out of Wisconsin, someone that I really like a lot. You don't have to spend the second round pick on Trey McBride. As much as the Jets may love Trey McBride, you don't probably have to do that. Or even Jeremy Ruckert, maybe, I mean, maybe if you last to round four, you pull the trigger on that. I would love Jeremy Ruckert, but... Um, I think this kind of takes that need away. And now in the second round, you could look at safety. You could look at linebacker. You could look at corner um, and really, you know, try to improve this defense. And, you know, I'm eventually going to get around to doing mock drafts after the free agency period dies down. But right now, like before yesterday, I would have thought, OK, the Jets are still going to take a tight end on day two. Not sold. I don't know. That's not, that's not a guarantee at this point. And uh, the Jets got two tight ends now who can catch the football, which is, again, I have to pinch myself because the last time the Jets had that was, I don't know. Uh, Dustin Keller was the last legitimate tight end this team had, but when they had two legit pass catching tight ends, I, I guess Dustin Keller and Chris Baker, that happened for a year in 2008, if I'm not mistaken, right? Um that's probably the last time I can't, I can't think of another time, which is a little crazy here, but good signing. Love it. Make Zach Wilson's life easier. Give him some targets over the middle that could actually catch the football and be impactful to an offense in 2022. Uh, and then Jacob Martin, who's just going to be a rotational edge guy, three years, 13 and a half million, only 6 million guaranteed. Last year, he had four sacks, 38 pressures. Like I said, he was a rotational guy for Houston. He'll be a rotational guy for the Jets. They love to move guys in and out. We, we saw it last year, almost to a fault at, at times. They would have uh, the, the lesser team out on third downs and important situations, which hopefully they're doing a little bit less of. But I thought, you know, that's pretty efficient considering the number of uh, snaps that he had last year. Uh, kind of this is almost like a Vinnie Curry kind of a signing from last year. I wish Vinnie Curry played because I was a huge fan of him, but obviously that injury was huge for him. He missed the entire year uh, and may not play again. Um, this doesn't impact what the Jets are going to do early in the draft. To me, they, they are a lock to take an edge rusher at either four or ten. Um, I would think more than likely four, but worst case scenario, they, they wait. Um, I, I think they could take Jermaine Johnson as high as four, even if KT is off the board. Um, maybe they do end up taking Ikiakuanu. Again, I would be surprised with that, but 
Some people are saying that there's still a legitimate chance that the Jets can take a tackle or an offensive lineman at four. Um, but I still really think that this team is going to address edge early. And I don't think this plan or this signing changes that plan. Again, very little guaranteed money, only $6 million guaranteed. He's someone who's going to be just a, a rotational guy, but a, a, a solid one. It, it's not going to be, you know, some people we've never heard of coming off the edge. And while Jacob Martin's not a household name, he's fine in that role. He's fine. You need depth, and this is what it was. It was a depth signing. We'll see if they make any more depth signings today. I might be back with another video, but wanted to get out a quick reaction video on Tyler Conklin, and then this morning they signed Jacob Martin, so just a couple thoughts there. Let me know what you guys think of the signings down below in the comments or on social media. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Matt O'Leary. I'll talk to you next time.